So today we're going to be talking about various ways that we can extend the route module within Adonis. And to start with, I actually want to walk through the example Adonis has on their documentation because it aligns really well with what we just covered in the last lesson regarding signed URLs. So let's go ahead and pop that open. So within the routing page under extending router, we have this example right here. It takes place within the boot method of our app provider. And what this is doing is it's assigning a macro off of our route module using the macroable route property called must be signed. And in particular, this is assigning a middleware to whatever route this is chained off of that is validating that the route contains a valid signature within its requested URL. So let's go ahead and run through this within our application. So let's open up our project. Let's head into our app provider file. And then under boot, let's go ahead and import our route module. Now we need to import it inside of the boot method because within the boot method, the IOC container then becomes ready. We cannot import it at the top level because the IOC container is not ready at that point. So we don't have the route module available to us. So within the boot method, let's do const route. And the way that we can import registered IOC containers within the boot method is by calling this. Then we can reach for our app. Then we can reach for the container of our app. And then we can tell it to use. And then within here, we can define whatever IOC container module we need to use. So as you can see here, we have available pretty much everything that we would have available if we were importing via the top level. Uh, so we can just do Adonis core route and that will give us back the route module. Don't forget to have an equal sign there. So now we have our route module. So we could do route dot, and you'll see that we have pretty much everything that we're making use of within our route definitions. You know, we have our post put, make URL, make signed URL groups, all that fun stuff. But if we actually start typing route in addition to this, you'll see a couple of key properties to make note of that are important whenever it comes to extending it with additional macros and getters. So as we saw in the example, we have route in its own. So this is a macroable route. If we hover over it, you'll see the type is macroable constructor contract for route contract. So if we take a look at what we have available off of it, we have a getter and a macro, and then we have a hydrate function as well. And that's pretty much going to be the case regardless of what we call here. So if we call route group, it's going to be the exact same thing. So it's going to, it's going to be a macroable version of our group. So we can use these properties in particular to extend our route module. So whenever we define a macro, say off of the macroable route property, the defined macro is then going to be assigned to the route module as a whole. All right, so let's go ahead and define the macro that Adonis has on their documentation. So let's see, create a macro called must be signed. That macro then takes a callback function. Now, one thing to note that's important here is that we don't want to use an arrow function because then as you'll see, this is still in regards to our app provider. Whereas if we take a look at the documentation, they're calling this dot middleware, which we do not have available using an arrow function. So this callback is scope specific. So we do want this to be a normal function, not an arrow function. And now that we have a normal function, we could do this dot, and you'll see that we have various properties and methods available to us. In particular, the one that you'll most likely use is middleware. But if you have a specific use case for any of the others, I guess you would want to make note of those as well. So they are calling this dot middleware to assign a middleware to whatever route this macro gets called on, which then takes a function, which gets CTX and next, and this one can be an arrow function. And then within here, we essentially just want to do what we're doing within our test signature route, which is essentially check to make sure that it has a valid signature. So if we do not, CTX request has valid, whoops, valid signature. So if we do not have a valid signature, let's handle that there. Otherwise, we will await next. If we do not have a valid signature, we can return CTX response say that this is a bad request and note that it had an invalid signature. Last thing that we want to do inside of our macro here is actually just return this. That way we can chain additional things off of this macro. And remember that this actually does contain the things that we use within our route definition. So things like as for naming, domain for setting a domain, middleware, namespace, things like that. So that's why we want to return this so that those things are available after we call must be signed. Okay, so now we need to tell TypeScript about this macro change. Okay, so within our contracts directory, let's create a new file called route.ts and let's declare module at IOC Adonis core route. 
we want to explicitly define this for the interface route contract. And then we want to define the function that we just added. So it must be signed. This is a function. It doesn't take anything, but it does return the context of the route contract. So we'll put this after that. So we can give that a save. And if you're not sure exactly what interface or what type you need to assign your additional changes to, so we can take the property that we're assigning the macro off of, and we can see that it is of type macro bull constructor contract of type route contract. So it's that of type that we want to actually assign our changes off of. So that's why we are using route contract there. So now if we head into our route definitions on our test signature route here, we can now chain off of it. The additional method must be signed. And this is going to do the has a valid signature check for us. So now if we are within the route handler, we know that this is in fact a valid signature. So we can take this out and return. This is valid because the signature is actually valid. And we know that because we now have a middleware on this route verifying just that. So we can follow that flow with each of the different properties that we have off of our route module as well. Okay, so if we do route dot and then we start typing route, we can see that we have route group, route matchers, route resource, and brisk routes. Each of these have this same macro function that we can apply to it and it's going to be pretty much the exact same that we have for our base route. Uh, the one difference is going to be the route resource. Now, if we start to assign a macro for this, we'll just call this test, get our callback function going on here. And then we can do this dot middleware. And then as we start typing, we'll pause right here and we'll note that this is not expecting a callback function like the one for our must be signed macro up here. Instead, this is expecting an object of the various resource types. So we haven't covered resource routes yet. We're going to be doing that briefly after we cover controllers because resource routes need controllers in order to work. So resource routes define multiple routes and handle multiple routes for the entire CRUD flow of a particular resource. So say we're working with posts, a resource is going to define the routes for getting all routes, getting a single route, updating a route, creating, uh, showing the create page, showing the update page, editing a route, deleting a route, it's going to handle all of that in one brief call. So in order to define a middleware, we cannot define a middleware to all of them just simply using a callback function. We actually need to provide an object and define which of those actions we want to apply this middleware to. So we can define a middleware specifically for a particular route. So say in this case, the create route. And then this then would take the callback function that we would have up here. So let's say maybe for whatever reason, we need the create route on our resource to have a valid signature on it. We can apply that exact same middleware to the create method. Uh, then we could apply a different one to the update. And then we could apply another one to the destroy. So we could do them individually like that, or we can apply them to all of them using a star. So this will apply to all routes defined on the resource, or you could do them individually. So we haven't covered resources yet, but I did want to note that because this one in particular is different from all of the rest. I'm actually going to go ahead and change this name from test to must be signed. And then we need to inform TypeScript about this change as well. So if we take a look at our route resource here, we can see that the type is macroable constructor contract for the type route resource contract. So if we head into our route contract here, we'll want to extend the interface route resource contract with the exact same thing that we have above. Oh yeah, and uh, don't forget to return this. So let's head back into our app provider real quick. And yep, we got the little red squiggly there reminding me that we need our return type. So not inside of our middleware, but just inside of our macro, we'll want to return this at the end of it. So now we don't have any resource routes defined, but if we did, we would be able to now chain off of it, must be signed as well. So since route resource pretty much is the only one that's astray here, we can go ahead and copy our base route macro for must be signed. And let's go ahead and just add must be signed to our group as well. So we can do route group, and there we go. So last thing that we need to do here is tell TypeScript about this change. And if we hover over route group down here at the end, if I can get my tooltip to work right, we can see that we have route 
group contract. So if we head into our route contracts, we can extend the interface route group contract must be signed and apply this to it. So now if we had a whole group, we could assign must be signed to it. I don't want to break those routes, so I'm going to take that off of it. Uh, and then last out of the actual group functionalities here, we have route dot and we have our brisk route. So we'll do a macro off of this one. And this one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, so we'll give this one a name of go home within the callback here. And if we do this dot, you'll see that we have, again, just as we do with our route, everything that we actually have available on brisk routes, which remember brisk routes are the ones that we define as route dot on. So this one right here is a brisk route. Uh, they don't really take a handler, although you can set a handler uh, using their chain. So we can do all of those just within a easy to use function. So for example, let's say for this brisk route, we wanted it to go home. We could call redirect and just have it go to home. And so now any brisk route that we chain this off of will then just be redirected back to the home page. And if we take a look at the brisk route type, you can see it's the brisk route contract. So we can do interface brisk route contract, go home, and it needs to return this, which again, I forgot to do, I am sorry. <laughs> so let's return this, there we go. And then off of our routes, we can, instead of redirect to path, we can just go home. So we can give that a save and there we go. Okay, so the last one that we're gonna cover here today is adding in an additional matcher to our routes. So we can do route dot and then there was one called route matchers, which we can then call a macro off to add an additional matcher. So we'll give this a name of stewed alpha string function. And then off of this, we can call this and then just call another one if we wanted to, but that's not very useful uh, because those already exist. So instead, let's go ahead and just return back a new object. And this needs to essentially follow the same construct that a matcher follows. So it has a match property, which we can use to match using a particular uh, regex. So here we're gonna verify that our entire string is a character between A and Z. Um, and then additionally, we could also call cast as well. Uh, since all route parameters are actually defaulted to strings. Um, this is going to be pretty much a mute point. So we can just exclude the cast for this, but I did want to note that you can define a cast for your macro by adding in a cast property. Okay, so we have our alpha string macro here. So now let's just see what type we need to define it under. Route matchers contract, let's head into our routes contract file, do interface route matchers, contract and then we need to define our function so alpha string and instead of returning this this one actually returns back an object with a match that is a regular expression so we can give that a save now we can head into our routes and um, i think the only matcher that we're using at this point is on the global level so we'll just add in a new route here so we can do route dot get uh, test and we'll just do a route param called testing We'll just return back cool and we can do where and we'll do this for our testing parameter and we'll do route dot matchers and there is our alpha string all right cool so throughout this lesson we covered how you can add in your own matcher to your route dot matchers how you can add a new chain method off of your resource routes risk routes route groups and your routes as a whole main thing to keep in mind is that whenever you're using a macro except for the route matchers, you're going to want to return this so that it can be additionally chained off of. And then for the resource extensions within your middleware, return an object instead of a callback. Those are your two main points to keep in mind going forward. Now, if you had additional things within your app provider, this can get a little bit chunky. Um, so you can create a new provider uh, and then move these over into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that just so that this is a little bit cleaner um, whenever you might look back to it. So we could do node ace make provider, and I'm just gonna call this, uh, I guess, route provider. Probably makes the most sense. 
So that's going to create the provider for me. And then I'm just going to take everything that we defined here today, cut it out of here and move it over into the route provider. And there we go. So we can give that a save. So that should be it. Um, I do want to note that since we use the CLI, Adonis was going to automatically register our provider. But if you just went under your folder, created a new file, you're also going to want to register the provider that you created within your Adonis RC.json. There is a key called providers, just add it within that array like so.